BRIAM stands for the Building Research Establishment Environmental Assessment Method. And thankfully, we don't have to say that every time. It was introduced in the UK in 1990 and sets best practices for the environmental performance of buildings through design, specification, construction and operation. BRIAM assessments are carried out by trained assessors using the following nine criteria. 1. Energy 2. Land use and ecology 3. Water 4. Health and well-being 5. Pollution 6. Transport 7. Materials 8. Waste and 9. Management Each category focuses on the most influential factors, including reduced carbon emissions, low impact design, adaption to climate change, ecological value and biodiversity protection. Independent licensed assessors carry out an assessment of a scheme and each of the criteria is scored and then multiplied by a weighting. Two assessment stages are carried out, a design stage assessment which results in an interim certificate and a post-construction assessment resulting in the final certificate being issued and a rating awarded. Each element is scored and then multiplied by a weighting. There are minimum thresholds that must be achieved. The overall score is then translated into one of the following BRIAM ratings. 1. Unclassified. This is a score under 30%. 2. Pass. This is a score between 30 and 44%. 3. Good. This is a score between 45 and 54%. 4. Very good. This is a score between 55 and 69%. 5. Excellent. This is a score between 70 and 84%. And finally, I think we're on six, outstanding, which is a score of over 85%. The BRIAM rating benchmark levels enable a client or other stakeholder to compare an individual building performance with other BRIAM rated buildings and the typical sustainability performance of new non-domestic buildings in the UK. Each BRIAM rating broadly represents performance equivalent to outstanding, classed as an innovator, this relates to the top 1% of UK non-domestic buildings. Excellent. Cluster's best practice. These are the top 10% of UK non-domestic buildings. Very good. Cluster's advanced good practice. This includes the top 25 of UK new non-domestic buildings. Good. Cluster's intermediate good practice. This encompasses the top 50% of the UK new non-domestic buildings. And finally, pass. Cluster's standard good practice. This relates to the top 75% of the UK new non-domestic buildings. One of the major disadvantages of BRIAM is the potential for higher capital costs for the building to reach the required standard. BRIAM assessments have also been accused of being overly complicated to administer. As a result, it's not uncommon for developers to engage BRIAM advisors to advise the design team and to monitor BRIAM compliance. Conversely, buildings constructed to achieve a higher BRIAM rating provide many benefits for the individuals living and working within them, such as increased comfort and, in turn, productivity. There is also advice that suggests these buildings are more attractive to investors, purchasers and tenants, meaning you could rent or sell these spaces for more. If you'd like us to explore BRIAM in more detail, please comment below. This channel is to help quantity surveyors in the industry and in education so we want to ensure the content we provide is valuable and in need. Matrone, a commercial hub to your business.